we begin our journey on the east end of the trail, where there is a large parking lot on busy Route 63 in Naugatuck, Connecticut. The trail climbs gradually as we circumnavigate Lewis Hill and past the former station site of Bradley's. The railroad was built to minimize the grades, and this explains why the trail has many curves as it climbs through the western Connecticut hills. The trail passes Tewantic Pond and reaches the former Tewantic station site. This is the summit and halfway point on the trail. After a few more twists and turns, the trail reaches the former Southford station site and a large parking lot. Continuing west, we come to the busy and dangerous Route 67 crossing. Ten miles in, the trail abruptly ends at Kettletown Road in Southbury. Out of the parking lot, there is a short steep climb to reach the grade. There used to be a railroad overpass here. If we continue to the east, our next stop would be Waterbury. Larkin State Park Trail stretches across four towns. This 10.3 mile long linear trail combines enough remarkable history, geography, and aesthetic beauty to rate as 110 acres as one of the biggest and prettiest parks in Connecticut's system. We will be traveling along the old railroad bed of the New York and New England Railroad. The section of trail we are riding today was opened in 1881 and abandoned in 1937. As we'll see, the trail surface varies from sand, packed dirt, and cobbles to the original ballast and cinders. And for those who enjoy a little adventure, there are a few wet areas to traverse. thing you'll notice right away as you're riding this trail from east to west is that the first five miles is uphill. As you're climbing between the Naugatuck Valley on the Waterbury side and the Housatonic Valley on the Newtown side. This flat area on the right once hosted a combination passenger and freight station. Originally called Osborne Town, it was renamed Allerton Farms for George M. Allerton, a highly regarded entrepreneur in the Naugatuck rubber industry. Many of the historic photos and facts used in this video are courtesy of the Tyler City Station website. If you're interested in knowing more about Connecticut railroads, I highly recommend you check out Tyler City Station. I'll put a link in the description below. Right now we're on a pretty big fill. Another thing you might notice about this trail is there's a lot of curves on it. As they were building the railroad, they had to work their way around many obstacles known as hills, maybe even some mountains. And it's a lot easier to go around them than straight through them. One of my favorite trails in the state of Connecticut. It's uh, not too long, it's only about 10 miles, but what it really has to offer is kind of the natural state of the railroad was in at or around the time of abandonment. And it goes through uh, hills and valleys, cutting across from the Naugatuck Valley to the Housatonic Valley. Bradley's. The station here was a small 10 by 20 foot structure located east and north of the trestle. The view really opens up over here. You get a nice shot across the valley looking south here. As you can see, the right of way went straight here, 
but the trail takes a right to kick us down to South Street. There would have been a bridge over South Street and the railroad would have kept going straight and level. But uh, those bridges were removed when the railroad was abandoned to make it easier for cars. What's cool about South Street is they actually left one of the abutments in place. So it was probably a narrow bridge. So they removed one of them and it was easier to leave the other one up. And that's why the trail came down uh, to the road on this side. But on the other side, there's a more gradual uphill to get you back up to the right of way. I'll show you what I'm talking about. On collision of two freight trains occurred here on March 12, 1899. The engineer and fireman of the eastbound train were killed, while the crew on the westbound train jumped to safety before the collision. The cause of the collision was the failure of the westbound crew to obey train orders. Past South Road, the right of way here gets uh, a little bit gravelier and wider. The reason for this is I believe there's a gas pipeline. You can see these pipes sticking up out of the ground. So they repurpose this right away as a gas pipeline. went through a pretty muddy section back there and the reason for that is they've taken the road here and uh, filled it in where there's probably a highway bridge at one point. So now we got to climb a very steep embankment to get up to the other side. You're riding down there? <laughs> okay. Just want to know if I was in your way or not. So now that I've walked up that, I'm kind of wondering what it's going to be like on the other side. I got a little heads up from some bikers going the other way. It was uh, fairly firm though, for the most part. We just passed Tawantik Pond, and we're just about at the summit, so if I look ahead, I can kind of see the crest. And once we pass that, it's five miles downhill. This is the original Tawantic Station site. It was located here in the southwest quadrant of the grade crossing. After crossing a swampy section of Jack's Brook on a causeway, we come to this wide right of way located parallel and south of the trail. Could this have been the original railroad alignment? This short side trip leads to OEC Brewing, which offers a selection of beers, ciders, pizza, and hot pretzels. They are open daily except Monday.
amazing arch culvert. You gotta go down and check it out. The Southford Station site once stood here on our left. It was a combination station that served both freight and passengers. There is a large parking area here that serves the west end of the trail. This image and subsequent track diagram illustrate that this area was once quite busy. Awesome stretch of trail right here, nice and smooth and flat. came down from up there. This is Jeremy Swamp Road. We're almost at the end. We got one more to go, but it might not be obvious where to go. So when you get to the bottom of this hill, take a left and then take a right. All right, we've reached mile 10 and the end of the line. At the end of the trail lies the sprawling IBM campus. Established in 1987, its access road was built on the railroad right-of-way. In December of 2023, IBM announced it will be pulling out of Southbury. Maybe this will allow for a future extension of the trail. If you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor and subscribe to the channel. It really makes a difference and I greatly appreciate it. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you on the next adventure.